slide outlines the steps used to analyze a frame by using the cantilever methods. First, you need to determine the lateral load acting on each floor. Determine the positions of the center of gravity. Calculate the distance between each columns to the center of gravity. The axial force shall be proportional to the distance of the columns from the center of gravity. Analyze the frame floor by floor from the top floor. Determine the axial force in each columns. Based on the axial force obtained in each columns, construct the free body diagram for each joint and determine the shear force in the beams and columns at each floor. The steps to determine the axial force and the shear force in each floor of the columns and beams are repeated for the following floors. The axial force obtained from the upper floor will be brought forward to the following floor. Same goes to the following floor until to the ground floor of the building. To better imagine the calculation steps, let us look into an example. A 7-storey building is subjected to a wind load of 2.94 kN per meter height. Use the factor of safety equals to 1.2. Determine the axial force, shear force, and moment acting on the beams and columns at each floor. There are four continuous columns, which are spaced at 6 meters each. The story heights are given here, 4 meter high for the ground floor. The rest of the floor are 3.5 meters and there is a parapet wall of 1 meter on top of the roof. To solve these questions, first we need to determine the lateral load acting on each floor. This is obtained by multiplying the wing load with the factor of safety and the height of the floor levels. It is assumed that for each floor, it is divided into half. Half of the height of each floor will go to the upper story, while the other half will go to the lower story. In the case that there is no upper story at the top roof level, the force will be taken by the closest floor level entirely. These are the lateral loads as calculated from each floor. The 9.7 kN here is calculated by multiplying the wing load of 2.94 with the factor of safety 1.2 and multiply with the floor height, which is equals to 1 meter and half of the 3.5 meter. For the following level of 12.3 kN, it is obtained by multiplying 2.94 with the factor of safety 1.2 and multiply the height of the floor, which is half of the 3.5 meter plus another half of the 3.5 meter from the lower story. As the floor height here as the same, the lateral load of 12.3 kN is applied throughout. For this floor, the ground floor height is 4 m. The lateral load of 13.2 kN is obtained by multiplying 2.94 with the factor of safety 1.2 and multiply with half of the height of the story at the upper of the floor and another half height of the story at the lower of the floor. Once you have obtained the lateral load acting on each floor, you need to determine the distance of the columns from the center of gravity of the structure. 
With that, you need to identify the locations of the center of gravity. Based on the frame structure here, the span here is symmetrical. You know that the center of gravity will be at the middle of the frame, which is 9 meter from the side of the structure. In the case that the beam span here is not symmetrical, let's say the beam span here is 4 meter, 5 meter, and 6 meters, you need to determine the positions of the center of gravity by using a formula which is sigma xf divided by sigma f. Assuming that the axial force in each column is equal to f. There are four columns here, a, b, c, and d. Summations of the axial force of all the four columns will be equal to 4f. This will be the sigma f. Next, taking the point A as the reference point, the positions of column A, B, C, and D are 0 meter, 6 meter, 12 meters, and 18 meters, as listed here. Taking the Asia force as the F and the positions of the column as the X, the multiplications between these two columns will give you the fx. f multiply 0, you obtain 0. f multiply 6, 6f, and so on and so forth. The summations of all the fx, you will get the sigma xf which is to be substituted into the equation here. You will obtain the center of gravity of 9 meters from the reference point of column A. Next, you will need to determine the distance of each column from the center of gravity. Based on the diagram here, you know that the distance from A to center of gravity will be equals to 9 b to center of gravity equals to 3 3 and 9 on basis of the second assumptions where the direct axial force in the columns are proportional to their distance from the center of gravity of the frame it is assumed that when the columns are further away from the center of gravity, the axial force will be larger. By comparing the distance of the columns from the center of gravity, which is 9, 3, 3 and 9, we will expect that the axial force in these columns is going to be 3 times of the axial force in the column B. As the calculation step for the frame analysis can be very lengthy, I use Excel spreadsheet to help me to compute the numbers. The lateral load it will be 2.94 kN per meter height. The factor of safety is 1.2. This gives a design load of 2.53 kN per meter height and the point load acting at each floor is indicated here, which is round up to one decimal place. The span between the columns are 6 meters each. There is a 1 meter height parapet wall. The ground floor has 4 meters height and the rest of the floor are 3.5 meters height. The center of gravity as obtained from the equation here was 9 meter and the distance of the columns from the center of gravity are obtained as 9 meter, 3 meter, 3 meter and 9 meter for columns A, B, C and D. In terms of the ratio, it is between 3 and 1. 
At the current stage, we do not know the axial force in the column. Assume that the axial force in the column is equal to P, and because of the second assumptions of the proportional distance with the axial load, the axial load in column A is estimated to be 3 times P. Same goes to column D as they are positions furthest away from the center of gravity. As for column B and C, it is assumed equals to 1 times P. Next, we will need to analyze the structures level by level. First, we take the top level of the structures. The free body diagram should look something like this. To resist the overturning force, there will be two axial force going upward while another two axial force going downward. Taking this point as the reference, based on the principles of static equilibrium, sigma m should be equal to zero so that the structure is stable. That means the overturning load due to the 9.7 kN time half of the story height is to be resisted by the axial force multiply their respective distance from the reference point here. Express the axial force here in the function of P. 3P, 1P, 1P, and 3P. Solve the equation here for the sigma m equals to 0. You will get P is equals to 0 0.283 kN. As you know that the axial force in the column here will be equals to 3P, 1P, 1P, and 3P. The P here is to be multiplied with 3 to obtain 0 0.85 kN and so on so forth. From here, we are able to determine the axial force in the column as N1, 2, 3 and 4. Once you have obtained the axial force N1, 2, 3 and 4, your next step is to determine the shear force in the beams and in the columns. This is obtained by cutting the frame structures into several subsections. As the section is cut, the internal forces will become the external force. For the sections being cut here, the left hand side will be this, while the right hand side will be this. From the free body diagram here, N1 is already known, which is equals to 0 0.85 kN. There will be two unknowns, which are F1 and H1. Taking the reference point here, you use the principle of static equilibrium, sigma m equals to zero, you are able to obtain H1. Next, you take the reference point here, use the principle of static equilibrium, where sigma m equals to zero, you are able to obtain the F1. With that, you have already determined the F1 and H1. The values are given here. Next, you need to determine the F2 and H2. Cut the frame structure here. The left hand side will be this, while the right hand side will be this. From the free body diagram here, and at the current stage, you have the N1, N2, and H1 norm. The two unknown are F2 and H2. Take this point as the reference, principle of static equilibrium, sigma m equals to zero, you are able to obtain H2. And then take this as the reference point, 
sigma m equals to 0, you are able to determine f2. The f2 and h2s are obtained here. Next, you need to determine f3 and h3. Cut the section here. The left hand side will be this free body diagram, while the right hand side will be this free body diagram. At this stage, you have already known the value of n1 to n3, h1 to h2, and the two unknown which you are not sure is f3 and h3. Repeat the same calculation steps. Taking the reference point here, sigma m equals to 0, you are able to obtain h3. Next, you take the reference point here, sigma m is equals to 0, you obtain f3. With that, you are able to obtain h3. The f3 and h3s are obtained here. From the free body diagram here, there is one more unknown. Based on the principle of static equilibrium, sigma fx is equals to zero. The summations of all the horizontal force here will be equals to zero. With the value obtained from h1 to h3 plus 9.7 kN, you are able to determine the h4. Your h4 now is obtained as 1.45. Since the structures are symmetrical, the beam are of equal span, we will expect a symmetrical axial force, shear force, and the horizontal force in the beams and columns. Minor differences as obtained here is due to the compound effects of the calculations by using the round numbers. If you wish to obtain a higher degree of accuracy, you may increase the number of the decimal place. For normal calculations, three significant figures is acceptable. Once you have determined all the forces in the top floor level, you will need to proceed with the analysis of the subsequent level. First, you need to determine the axial force in the columns. It is calculated by taking the entire thrust from the levels onward. In this case, there will be two levels. Taking the point here as the reference, sigma m equals to zero. The N5 to N8 is assumed in a proportional manner based on their distance to the center of gravity, which is equals to 3P, 1P, 1P, and 3P. Solve the equations for sigma M equals to 0. You will obtain the P now is equals to 1.21. This number is later to be multiplied with the ratio of 3 and 1p. The axial force in each column are listed here. Next, you need to extract the level here and draw it into a free body diagram. The height above the floor level is half of the floor height and this is another half of the floor height below the floor level. The axial force in the column will expose. Same goes to the columns below the floor level as well as the horizontal forces acting on the column. At this stage, you have already obtained the axial force from the upper story. Bring forward the numbers from the upper story. The directions of the forces will be a total opposite of the upper story so that they can be cancelled out when they combine together. 
Same principles goes to the horizontal force H1 to H4. The magnitude of H1 to H4 will be brought forward from the top floor. The directions of the forces will be opposite to the top floor. Substitute the relevant value in the free body diagram here. The unknown in this free body diagram it will be H5 to H8 and F4 to F5. Based on the similar calculation step as done at the top floor level, you will need to cut the sections one by one in order to obtain the F4 H5, F5 H6, F6 H7, and also H8. The respective values are given here. As the loops are being brought forward from the upper story, it is expectable to have the Asia force at the column here are normally greater than the Asia force at the upper columns. The shear force H1 to H4 are normally smaller than H5 to H8. And the shear force in the beam F4 to F6 are normally greater than F1 to F3. This is proven by the result here. This represents the Asia force, shear force in beam and in columns for the top floor. And for the subsequent flow, the value should be slightly greater. As the structure is symmetrical, it is reasonable to expect symmetrical reflections of numbers in the Asia force, shear force in columns and beams. Once you have obtained all the forces at this level, you will proceed for the analysis of the following level. From this level and above, draw the free body diagram here. The Asia force here is used to resist the overturning force generated by the lateral load. Taking this point as the reference, sigma m equals to zero, you are able to determine the Asia force in the columns. Again, the Asia force is in proportional to their distance to the center of gravity, which is 3p, 1p, 1p, and 3p. Solve the equations, you are able to determine the p, which is equal to 2.86. Multiply the numbers with the ratio here, you obtain the Asia force acting in the columns. From the flow levels here, extract these flow levels to the half height above and half story height below. You will obtain this free body diagram. Bring forward the Asia force from the upper story and also the shear force from the upper story. The directions of the force will be opposite to the upper story. The Asia force from the columns are being brought forward to this free body diagram as well. The unknown now at this current stage is F7 to F9 and H9 to H12. Based on the same working steps as demonstrated in the top level structures, you will need to cut the frame into three sections. It is for you to determine the F7 and H9 followed by F5 and H10, followed by F9 and H11, and lastly H12. The values are obtained here. Again, check the result. 
you will expect the asia force the shear force in the columns and the shear force in the beams are typically greater than the previous level also the value should be symmetrical after you have done these levels you will have to proceed to the following levels construct a free body diagram for these levels determine the asia force in the columns and then take out the subframe for the levels draw the free body diagram bring forward the asia force and horizontal force from the upper story carry forward the asia force calculated from that four levels of structures and determine the shear force in the beams and the columns the same steps or calculations will proceed for the following levels until the entire structure is analyzed what you see here is the calculation steps are repetitive first you need to determine the asia force in the columns it is calculated from the columns which you are interested and analyze the entire structures above it next you take out the floor levels the free body diagram should look something like this the forces are being brought forward from the upper story at the opposite directions cut the respective sections use the principle of static equilibrium to determine the shear force in the beams and in the columns once you have successfully attained all the values of all the stories your next step is to determine the moment in the columns and also in the beams take the top floor level as an example on basis of the first assumptions where the points of cotra fractures are located at the midpoint of all the columns and beams that means the force f1 to f3 and h1 to h4 are actually acting at the midpoint of the beam and the midpoint of the column height these forces are used to generate the moment acting on the beams and the columns let us try to generate the moment in the column first h1 is to be multiplied with the height of the column here which is half of the story height you are able to obtain m1 h2 multiply the height of the levels you are able to obtain m2 same process goes for the m3 and m4 next you use f1 to be multiply the half of the beam span you obtain the m5 f1 multiply the half of the beam span f2 multiply the half of the beam span you obtain m6 and n7 respectively same calculation steps used for the other joints from there you are able to obtain the moments in the columns and also the moments in the beams next you proceed to another level using the same calculation step as you did for the top floor level you will obtain the moments in the columns and the moments in the beams as in this level you have two horizontal force above and below the floor level this will give you the moments in the columns of above the floor level and below the floor level we will proceed with the calculation steps for the following levels 
until you have successfully obtained the moments in each column and also in each beam. Since that the force here is acting at the mid span of the beam, and this stretch will have the same beam span, you will know that the moment here and here will be the same. Here and here will be the same, and the moment here and here will be the same. Same goes to the column as well. As the horizontal force here is acting at the mid height of the column, the moment here and here will be the same, the moment here and here will be the same, and so on so forth. From the analysis outcome as obtained from the frame analysis, you are able to determine the moments acting in the columns and the beams. You may adopt the respective value for the design of the members. What you see here is the analysis of the frame of a multi-story building due to the lateral load is very lengthy and tedious. The values are to be brought forward to the subsequent flow and the generated value will be brought forward further to the next flow. This leads to a situation that slight error at the upper floor may lead to a situation where the errors are being brought forward to the subsequent flow. This is going to be a nightmare to you when you analyze the structures by using the manual calculations. This kind of analysis are normally conducted with the aid of the computer programs. As far as the education concern, these are the principles and it is still possible to be analyzed through manual calculations. Also, bear in mind that this is a method for us to analyze or estimate the forces acting within the structure. And what you see from the example here, only the wing loops are being considered. In the case that the vertical forces are also being considered, the principles or superpositions may be applied. Although it is not specified in the references that I have used, I personally believe that this analysis can be adopted together with the moment distributions of the frame analysis together that is used to estimate the load due to the vertical load. The bending moment diagram as obtained from the outcome here may possibly be superimposed onto the moment diagram as obtained from the analysis of the lateral load structures. This understanding of combining the moment diagram from the analysis here and the moment distributions of the structures, you will have to verify yourself in the real applications. With that, good luck and happy learning.